Well, with so much unrest and uncertainty in today's world, I have had so many conversations in the last few months from people who are not really into firearms, but they feel like they can't necessarily rely on government institutions and they want an extra layer of preparedness, but also safety in their life. And they feel like owning a firearm is something that they're ready for. And so I've had so many of these conversations lately. I wanted to make this quick video and share with you the three pistols I recommend to new gun buyers. Well, welcome back folks to another video here at Gideon's Tactical, I'm Aaron, and we're gonna dive into this question today because I've had conversations with family members, with close friends who are really taking a second look at the idea of owning a firearm and they've been asking me, you know, I wanna own a pistol, I'm contemplating maybe even getting my concealed carry, so I might want to carry it on body or, you know, in my um, purse or man bag, you know, whatever it may be, and just to have at home for an extra layer of security. And just, I'm, I'm looking into that. What do you recommend? And so, because I've had so much experience over the years with several different versions of different types of firearms, I wanted to share with you my recommendations. Now, this is just purely my recommendations. I'm an average Joe who likes firearms and has had a several go through my hands throughout the years so I can give kind of an overview and give you a few reasons on why I recommend these particular three firearms over such a large plethora of designs, brands, versions out there. So I wanna lay the precedent here and also recommend this very important piece of advice before I start pointing you in the direction of a few different firearms is get trained with firearms. Know what you're doing. Think of it like a vehicle. You don't throw a 16 year old behind a wheel without them ever sitting behind a wheel of a vehicle before. You want them to be trained. You want to teach them what to do, how to shift, how, what to do and engage and get have them have a good feel for how the vehicle operates because a vehicle can be an amazing tool that can do amazing things for you, but it can also be extremely dangerous and life threatening and life taking if you don't know how to manipulate and use the vehicle well. In the same way, a firearm is just a tool. There's nothing to be afraid of if you know what you're doing. But if you don't and you're not familiar with gun safety, the rules and how to manipulate a firearm well, it can become a dangerous life-threatening instrument very quickly. So get into a firearm safety class, a hunter safety class, take a concealed carry. If you're not familiar with firearms, ask someone who you know is very proficient, maybe a family member or friend, to have them take you out, explain how the firearms operate and manipulate before you just waltz in somewhere, try and buy a gun and have no idea what you're doing and how to use and manipulate a firearm. And before you know it, you're in a very dangerous situation. So that's just kind of my friendly advice. And as I said earlier, I'm just an average Joe. I have no military or law enforcement experience. I'm just an average guy who's had a lot of experience with firearms. And so with that, let's go ahead and dive in to these three firearms and why. So it's hard to not talk about pistols without talking about Glocks. And that's my number one here on the list is a Glock 19. This is a compact pistol. Uh, this is a nine millimeter and I'll speak to the calibers here in a little bit on why I prefer nine millimeters because that's what there will be in all three of these. And I know everyone's got an opinion on that. Feel free to leave a comment below, but I'm gonna explain a little bit in detail why I feel nine millimeter is the best for a new gun buyer, particularly um, when they are looking at these type of firearms. And so this is a compact model that will hold 15 rounds or possibly a little bit less depending on what version you get and what type of magazines and um, limitations that may be uh, out there. But the Glock 19 is an amazing firearm. It'll run usually at about $500 to $600. It's very simple to use. Um, it has very simple features and the support market is amazing. It is huge. That means extra parts, parts that maybe uh, you wanna upgrade, magazines, aftermarket sites. There are so many amazing options out there for Glock that you can literally walk in just about any gun store in America and find the parts that you need for a Glock 19. And the reason I'm saying Glock 19, though the 17 being a little bit larger, has more ammo capacity, has a little bit longer barrel, which means that it's a little more accurate. The 19 has this great blending of not being so large that even people with smaller hands can handle it, but still being big enough that even me with large size hands, I can use the firearm well, but it's slim enough and compact enough that you can conceal it on your body or in 
um, a bag or backpack or you know a purse without too much difficulty and so it has this crossover capability that you could use it in a safe in your home and then pop it out when you need it for home defense but you can also carry it on your person if you're wanting to go the concealed carry route and you can conceal it rather easily in most environments with most types of clothing without it printing which means that you know you can see it through the clothing it's it, it's easy to hide its print rather easily even with a t-shirt and a pair of jeans on. Now there is one drawback to the Glock design and that is basically the sights. I am not a huge fan of the factory sights. Some people love them. I just don't like that rear U shape. I prefer three dots, which are what the other two models I'm gonna to recommend to you today will have. Now you can upgrade that for about $100 more. Uh, I even put a pair of Trigicon three dot sights on my Glock uh, Gen 3, or excuse me, uh, Gen 5 Glock uh, 19, uh, G19. Um, version and uh, that absolutely helps kind of step up the accuracy for me personally so the sight picture though decent is not my preferred choice and may require an upgrade if you experience the same sort of site acquisition and target acquisition issues that I sometimes do with my stock Glock sights Next up is the Smith & Wesson M&P Compact. Now I have shot the 2.0, I believe they also have uh, the original version available. This is about the exact same size as the Glock 19. Uh, you can get them in several different calibers as well, um, which is something that you can obviously look at. What the difference with this uh, M&P is, is that you're gonna get a better sight picture, in my opinion, out of the box than you will on the Glock with that three dot sight that they offer to you. Um, it will have a couple other small features. I do tend to like the trigger a little bit more as well. And it has a more rounded ergonomic feel in the hand. It will also run you anywhere between $500 and $600, just kind of depends on who, what, when, where, why. And the reason that I also connect well with this design is, again, availability. Smith & Wesson is a very established uh, firearm manufacturer here in America, so that there are so many parts available. It's a very easily accessible gun, easy to access uh, magazines and things like that versus several other firearms. And I'm going to pause there because many of you may be like, well, I'm seeing this Ruger that's a lot cheaper. It's 350 bucks. Or, you know, I'm looking at a Springfield XDM, um, you know, nine millimeter or 40 or whatever it is. You know, you're looking at CZs, which are awesome. Um, maybe you're looking at a 1911, you know, version. You know, there's all, there's, there's literally which is awesome so many options out there and there's so many great capabilities but without going into tons of detail I've owned Springfields before and I just don't really connect with some of their designing at this point and they're rather complicated with some of them having over 50 moving parts inside the firearm um, compared to other versions of that we're looking at that may have slightly less sometimes um, and I just had a difficult time working with the firearm uh, and so I passed on that eventually got rid of that uh, got rid of my XD when those were originally coming out Rugers, I've never found a semi-auto Ruger that I liked shooting. Um, they just don't seem to function very properly. They definitely seem to be um, on the lower end of quality from everything that I've used, tested, and seen and heard from other ex people's experience. And then there's other really good brands out there. Again, H&K is another one. Um, you know, again, CZ. But these aren't as um, uh, available in their support here in the U.S. It's a little bit trickier to find magazines. It's a little harder to find spare parts for them. Not that that's impossible. It just means that it's less likely. You might have to wait and have back orders or, you know, you might have to go to three different gun stores before you, before you find a store that handles, you know, CZ parts or, you know, uh, HK parts, HK parts for um, this particular, you know, model. So, not that those are bad firearms to look at, it's just you gotta take in consideration what I'm taking in consideration for you, the beginning user. You want accessibility, availability of parts, magazines, and uh, other accessories. Holsters is another thing. A lot of these firearms I'm listing, these three that I'm listing to you, it's very easy to find holsters because they're so popular. Um, things like that, that maybe are a little trickier with less popular, less supported designs, even though they may function very well. Now, the one drawback to the Smith & Wesson is the texturing that they have on the handle. Um, I did not enjoy that texturing at all uh, for concealed carry. For a day at the range, it's not too bad for me who have used a lot of firearms. Maybe for those people who have maybe petite hands, females, things like that, it tends to have the feel of like a skateboard, which is really grippy and really good for traction, but it can be very ab uh, abrasive if you're carrying it on body in a concealed carry format. 
Um, or if you're just not used to firearms, it may cause blisters and cause some issues um, just because of the roughness of the handle. And so you'll either have to sand that down possibly, you might have to put some different types of modifications on the handle to give you some help with that. So that's something to consider is that the heavy aggressiveness of the handle is somewhat of a drawback to me for the Smith & Wesson. Now, before I give you my last recommendation, I just wanna talk about the ammo for a moment. You'll hear everyone under the sun give you all kinds of recommendations. 45 is the only way to go. That's what, you know, fought in World War One, World War II in Vietnam. That's what we should be using to this day. You'll hear people say 40 is a great blending of nine and 45. And you'll hear people say nine is the best way to go. I'm just gonna give you my experience and my recommendation. I would recommend looking at nine millimeters. In this day and age, you can get great heavy hitting ammo with hollow points and different options out there um, to give you great punch with your nine millimeter, but it also is gonna have the least amount of recoil. That means when the firearm, you know, recoils in your hand, which means that it's easier to manipulate, easier to use, and easier to keep your sight on target to put multiple rounds down range if needed, regardless if it's for a day at the range or in self-defense. And so that's why for me personally, and I have owned every version of those calibers, of those auto calibers that exist out there um, in the sense of nine, 45 and 40. And of all three, I prefer my nine millimeters and I prefer them not only because I get more rounds in the gun, I'm able to have good hitting power depending on the ammo that I choose. It's the cheapest to purchase and it also uh, is the easiest to learn with. Then down the line, if you do feel like you wanna upgrade and have more hitting power for whatever reason, then there are options out there. Only drawback to this is because nine millimeters tend to be the cheapest ammo as well as the cheapest firearms to buy right now with everyone interested in buying firearms, it may be difficult to find that ammo in particular or that caliber of firearm. So that is something to consider. Just weigh that, maybe call around, find a couple gun stores that you know are carrying that type of ammo so that it's easier for you to purchase. Whereas it's a little, I've seen more availability lately with 40 and 45, just because more people are buying my nine millimeter cause they're new gun owners. So take that in consideration when you're picking out the caliber of your firearm. All three of these firearms that I'm sharing with you today can be purchased in multiple calibers if you're having a very difficult time either finding the nine millimeter or uh, finding ammo for a nine millimeter and you just need the firearm. You're like, I, I hear what you're saying, but I just need one right now because of the situation I'm in and I need to go with a 40 or a 45 because of availability or desirability or whatever your experience may be. Again, this is just my personal opinion based off of the data that I've experienced. So finally, number three, and the one that I love the most, if you were to ask me of all three, what is your favorite firearm to take to the range to use on a regular basis and rely on, it's gotta be my SIG P320 compact. This firearm I have loved now for a few years. The sight picture I love. I'm able to get more rounds on target with this firearm than any of the other three that I've shared with you. Uh, it's a newer design to the market. It's about three or four years old at this point, I believe. Um, the P320 design has been picked up by the military, so there's going to be more and more um, availability of parts and magazines and um, options that are out there. You can get this in many different options. What I really like about it as well, on top of just when I use it, I'm able to get so many rounds on target better than the Smith & Wesson and better than my Glock is also that there is an ergonomic level that the other two just don't quite seem to have. Um, not only with the medium sized grip that I purchased, but you can get them in slim grip if you have thinner, smaller hands, or you can get them in a large grip as well. And they're very easy to swap out those different lower grips. I think it's like $40 a piece. Um, so you can even do like a large, you know, when you're going to the range and then you could do the slim, smaller version, uh, which just means it's narrower, um, you know, for concealed carry. It has a lot of capability there. I like the trigger pull on it. Um, it will come again. The one version I have is a nine millimeter in 15 round. Um, and so there are a lot of options with this SIG and it's only become more and more available, more and more accessories 
as well. And of all three, it's very well supported, but it's the best one for me personally to shoot. But my recommendation is again, if at all possible, to try to find a place either maybe you can rent these firearms and try them out for yourself. And I would recommend trying all three if you could. If you are in the market and you have that availability and accessibility, maybe ask again a friend or family member that you know owns a few of these firearms. See if they're willing to take you to the range to not only teach you gun safety tips, but also how to manipulate these firearms and so you can get a handle on them. But if you just gotta go with them, based on availability possibly in your area, options, connection that you're looking at. All three of these are great firearms for different reasons. And the SIG P320 is my favorite of all three. And these are the top three pistols that I would recommend to a new gun buyer. So thanks for sitting here with me and hearing my opinion. Love to hear the thoughts. I'm sure that we're gonna get all kinds of comments, positive and negative. You're gonna have your own opinions and I wanna hear all of them below. So thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I'd invite you to subscribe if you're not a current subscriber. Follow along with us uh, as well on Instagram and Facebook. Become part of the GT family here. Watch the other video popping up. And guys, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.